Information discussed in this podcast may be sensitive in nature to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Sandra Lynn Johnson Hughes loved the outdoors. She is what people would call a survivalist. Camping, hiking, and exploring were Sandra's favorite hobbies. It would stand to reason then that Hawaii was a great place for Sandra to live. But after the pandemic hit in 2020, Sandra decided to move to the mainland. So in June of 2020, California would become her home. On June 26th, she spoke to her family on the phone. Sandra was planning a solo camping trip and hiking, possibly up to Yosemite. She wanted to get away from the craziness of the world in its current state. Sandra, at 53 years old, was experienced in the outdoors, so no one was particularly worried about her. Until July 5th, when park officials found her campsite, which looked abandoned and was in total disarray. Definitely not like Sandra, who was exceptionally neat and organized. There would be some odd sightings of her, bruised and barefoot, but telling hikers, who didn't realize that she was a missing person, that she didn't need any help. She was just fine. A year later... A three-year-old boy had a spooky encounter in the area that Sandra disappeared from, an encounter that caught the attention of law enforcement. Yet, still, two years later, Sandra remains missing. Where is Sandra Lynn Johnson Hughes? Hello, and welcome back to the Where Are They podcast. Today's story of Sandra Johnson Hughes has so many elements to it. It's mysterious. It's confusing. It's paranormal. I guess all the traits that would make a story a good missing 411 case if you follow those. But the fact remains that Sandra hasn't been seen since July 4th of 2020 although there was a very possible sighting of her alive on August 9th and the following summer in 2021, possibly a paranormal encounter with a three-year-old. Confused? Don't be. Stay tuned. I'd like to give a quick welcome to our newest Patreon member, Christine. Thank you for supporting the show and our missing Anyone who is interested in some bonus episodes and content, you can find the link to our Patreon group in the show notes. National park disappearances are hard to cover, and in a lot of ways, it seems like it always must be the obvious. They got lost or injured while in the park. But even when we know their last locations and with extensive searches being done, How are so many people out there still missing? Sandra Lynn Johnson Hughes Sandra Johnson Hughes is one of those cases, and perhaps to California authorities and the different agencies that came together to help look for Sandra. If you are a regular listener of the show, you know that that is not always the case in these missing person stories. However, it seems in Sandra's disappearance, there were many different groups that did come out and search for her and took it very seriously. Sadly, she still hasn't been found. Sandra Johnson Hughes was born July 26, 1966. 
She was always an avid lover of the outdoors and in fact would study to be a park ranger while she was in college. Sandra was married twice and divorced twice, but she had no children and this gave her the freedom to move around a lot and do all the things she enjoyed. Exploring, sightseeing, camping, and hiking. In 2020, in light of the pandemic that was sweeping across the world, Sandra made the decision to move from her home in Maui, Hawaii, to California, where she knew she could continue pursuing her love of hiking and camping. On June 26, 2020, Sandra did speak to some family members on the phone and let them know that she was planning on going on this hiking and camping trip in the Sierra National Forest and possibly might hike all the way up to Yosemite. The world was in the midst of crazy times. And Sandra thought it would be best for her to get away, get away from civilization and people and get into the outdoors where she could be alone and hopefully remain healthy without the threats of the current pandemic. This was something Sandra was known to enjoy doing her whole life. As I mentioned, some friends and family members would refer to her as a survivalist, meaning quite capable of going out into the wilderness and surviving. The Disappearance On Sunday, July 5th, 2020, park officials found an abandoned campsite with what seemed like all their belongings left behind. However, they noted that the campsite was also in complete disarray with things strewn about, bags were emptied, and it was just an absolute mess. They were able to find enough personal belongings to identify that that campsite was that of Sandra Johnson Hughes. A search of the area, however, found no sign of Sandra. However, a short distance away, they found Sandra's 2005 Silver Saab near Chiquita Creek. It appeared as if the car had been possibly crashed into a tree, but at a slow rate of speed and then it rolled down into a ravine. They were able to tell by looking at the car in the area that the damage was fairly minimal and the car must have been moving at a slow speed, very likely under 20 miles per hour. The camp was found in an area known as Johnson Meadows and the car near Chiquito Creek. It's hard to map, although you can find both of those spots on Google Maps itself. There aren't any real connecting roads between the areas, possibly some hiking trails. However, the two locations are pretty close to each other. With such odd circumstances, finding this crashed car and finding this abandoned campsite, authorities reached out to Sandra's family. Her family told officers that they hadn't actually spoken to her since June 26th when she was leaving to go on this trip. When law enforcement told her family the state of the campsite, they knew something was wrong. This wasn't like Sandra at all. Sandra was meticulous with all of her belongings and very organized. There is no way her campsite would have been left like that by her. So the search for Sandra Johnson Hughes would begin. The search. Several different agencies came out to search for Sandra, including the Madera County Sheriff Department, California Highway Patrol, the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, and even the California Air National Guard. Searches consisted of both law enforcement officers and volunteers that came in to help. They would also bring in search dogs. The Air National Guard came in specifically to conduct some helicopter searches as well over the vast area of the Sierra National Forest. But nothing was found. Family also started putting up posters in all the nearby towns and businesses in that region, knowing that the area brings in so many hikers and campers, and it was the height of summer. Maybe someone coming or going would recognize her. 
And that's just what would happen. Two hikers came forward to say that they saw her on July 4th while they were hiking. They said she had a bruise on her face and she was barefoot, and the hikers asked her if she was okay or if she needed medical help. But she had assured them that she was just fine, and they continued on their way. It wasn't until they saw her missing person flyer in one of the nearby towns that they realized they had run into a missing person. So this sighting was on July 4th, just a day before authorities found her disheveled campsite and abandoned car. Authorities and family members are completely bewildered by this. Sandra was an experienced camper and known to be a survivalist. Sandra had even trained to be a park ranger as a young adult. She knew what she was doing out there, and she had never exhibited strange behavior like this before. So what on earth happened to cause this situation? Did she have an accident and bump her head? Is that the cause of the bruise and why her car was crashed? Or was there possibly someone else involved? I think the injury in the car crash theory has merit, However, what's confusing about that is authorities saying that the car had likely crashed because it was rolling off of the road, not driving off of the road. On Sunday, August 9th, 2020, over a month since Sandra was last seen, another sighting of her would come in. Two hunters said they saw a woman leaning against a tree along road 5S01 near Bayshore Road in the area of Chiquito Creek. Almost exactly where Sandra had been just before her disappearance. They said that she did not appear distressed or say anything to them. She was just leaning up against a tree and hunters thought she was just a hiker taking a break. Upon returning back into the town, they recognized her from a missing persons flyer they saw hanging up and they immediately contacted authorities. They knew it was the same person. However, they did tell authorities that while they were certain it was Sandra, she did appear to be much thinner than her last known photos. The searches would continue in the Sierra National Forest with a concentration on the area of Johnson Meadows, where her camp was, and the Chiquito Creek area where her car was found. The Sierra National Forest. The area where this takes place proves to be a tricky area to search. The Sierra National Forest is breathtaking and in some areas unforgiving and covers over 1.3 million acres. The forest is known for its beautiful scenery, the mountains, the lakes, and the flowing creeks. And all of this brings out nature enthusiasts to hike, camp, and explore. And in fact, people travel from all over to do just that in the Sierra National Forest. The area does struggle some with forest fires, and it sits in between two other national parks, the Sequoia National Forest to the south and Yosemite National Park to the north. Not to mention Death Valley isn't too far to the southeast as well. Johnson Meadows, where Sandra was last seen, is kind of in the center of the forest. Kind of just east of San Francisco. It's a popular place for bird watching and nature lovers to find all kinds of wildlife and plant species. Wikipedia also points out these points of interest from Wikipedia directly. The forest includes a number of scenic attractions, including Fresno Dome and Nelder Grove. Several reservoirs offer fishing and boating, including Bass Lake, Shaver Lake, Wishon Reservoir, and Courtright Reservoir. There are numerous hiking opportunities in wilderness areas, Ansel Adams, John Muir, Dinky Lakes, Kaiser, and Monarch. There is also a popular ski resort, China Peak, that operates under a special use permit within the park. Great sailing opportunities exist at Huntington Lake. With over 1.3 million acres of forest and mountains, it's possible to understand how people could get lost. 
But in the case of Sandra Johnson Hughes, something else was likely going on here. I looked at a lot of beautiful photos and videos of the Sierra National Forest. There's tons online. I've never been there, but it looks like a stunning place. It also looks to have some pretty dense forests, especially surrounding Johnson Meadows. I know the searchers brought in dogs, but they also mentioned helicopters. However, I have to wonder how beneficial that would be if she were in one of those many heavily forested areas. I do want to talk about something that would happen a year after Sandra vanished, something involving three-year-old boy. A vision which would catch the attention of law enforcement because of the accuracy of it. It's pretty astonishing. Just over a year after Sandra went missing, the Gorba family decided to take a family trip to the Madera County Mountains. While they were en route, they decided to make a stop in the forest for some lunch. While there, they noticed their three-year-old son, Caden, acting as if he was talking to someone or looking for someone. But they really just chalked it up to a curious toddler. While leaving, Caden was notably staring out the window at something intently. So intently, in fact, that they had to ask him what he was doing. Victoria asked her son what he was looking at. And his answer gave her goosebumps. But again, children can have wild imaginations. However, there was something very different about his answer, the way he said it, and the specific details that he spoke about. She had never heard him talk like this before. Caden told his mom there was a woman in the meadow, pointing at the meadow, Johnson's meadow, and she needed help. Victoria said that her son said to her, quote, Yeah, there's a lady over in the meadow in a black shirt. She needs our help, but she's dead and she's laying face down with her legs up and she can't talk to me, but she's over there and we need to go help her, end quote. Victoria also went on to say that something about Caden's tone spooked them enough that they got out of the car and walked around the meadow looking. They didn't know what they were looking for exactly, but they looked anyways. Maybe he had seen something. Although the way he had told them was very out of character for this three-year-old boy. And they didn't find anything out of the ordinary and they would continue on their trip. But the mood had changed and they couldn't shake the spookiness of that event. So they eventually packed up and went home earlier than planned. Victoria then went on Facebook and shared the story of Caden's odd behavior that day with family and friends, just as many parents do every day with their children. But Victoria, who was unaware of Sandra Johnson Hughes, wasn't ready for the phone call that she would get from Madera County Sheriff Deputy Chris Williams. Somehow, Victoria's post came across his Facebook feed and it stopped him in his tracks. In her post, Victoria gave a very detailed description of the woman that Caden said was out there and needed help. Deputy Williams recognized the description immediately. It was an exact match to his missing person case from the year before, a case that had had little to no leads. The case of Sandra Johnson Hughes. Victoria was shocked, but after learning more about Sandra's mysterious disappearance, Everything Caden had told her suddenly started to make sense and fit perfectly. Victoria told WSET News, quote, He was very adamant that we needed to help her, and he described her right down to her blue hair. He said she has a black shirt, blue jeans, and blue hair, Mom. And that's the exact description of her when she went missing. End quote. Astonishingly, Caden had been able to describe her right down to the detail of what she was wearing and even her dyed blue hair. The following day, Caden and his dad rode back up the mountain with the county sheriff. The sheriff wanted to go check out the area where the family had been when Caden had this vision. Unfortunately, though, the search once again came up dry. While the story of Caden and his vision is certainly odd, And you can't argue that it's a bit spooky as well. But we still haven't found Sandra Johnson Hughes. 
So what could have happened to Sandra? Is she living a life out there in the wild, in the Sierra National Forest somewhere? Did she have an accident which caused her odd behavior and eventually possibly succumbed to her injuries? Or did she meet with foul play out in the wilderness and away from witnesses? What do you think of the story that three-year-old Caden told? Do you believe he had a vision of her? Or is the story too unbelievable for you? Sandra Lynn Johnson Hughes is described as a Caucasian woman standing about five foot three inches tall and weighing around 150 pounds at the time of her disappearance. If the sighting of her by the hunters was accurate in August of 2020, Sandra may have lost a significant amount of weight. In 2020, Sandra had shoulder length hair dyed blue. Her natural hair color is brown, and she sometimes went by the nickname Sandy. When she was last seen in June of 2020, Sandra was 53 years old. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Sandra Johnson Hughes, please contact the Madera County Sheriff's Office at 559-675-7770. Sandra has now been missing for two years. Please share her story. There are a lot of people that visit the Sierra National Forest every day. The more people that know about her and can keep a watch out for her, the higher likelihood she can be found. Thank you so, so much for listening to Sandra's story today. If you have any feedback or case suggestions, please send me an email at canwefindthem at gmail.com. You can also hit me up on Instagram. You can find us at the Where Are They podcast or on Facebook. Just search for the Where Are They podcast page. I want to thank our newest Patreon member once again, Christine. Thank you so, so much for supporting the show. The link to our Patreon group will be in the show notes and helps us out so much when we partner with different charities and families. We will also continue to allocate our merch sale funds to the charities as well. And of course, that link will also be in the show notes. Again, a huge thank you for listening to Sandra Johnson Hughes' story today. Quite a baffling one. And hopefully the family can have answers and a resolution very soon. We will be back again next week with another Unsolved Missing Person episode. And until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.